Good evening, welcome to the Tropical Update for August 19th, 2020. As always, these thoughts outline of mine alone, and I'm making decisions regarding these systems that I'll be discussing. Please refer to your local weather offices, your local officials, and the National Hurricane Center for all official information regarding each system. All right, we've got 97L here in the Central Caribbean, and we have 98L here in the central Atlantic. We're going to get to 97L first. You can see the system has become a little more organized today, a little more compact convective presentation here. You can see that it is more centralized. This is not really something that is stretched out or broad. And throughout the day, the vorticity in the lower levels has been able to increase in intensity and it has been able, been able to strengthen some. And we're getting closer to having a tropical depression here. But you can one thing you can note about the convection is the general lack of organization in the convective presentation. Here you have convection that is kind of waxing and waning, and that is largely due to the drier air that is in this, that is just to the north of the system. And as this exits this region of the Caribbean, this dry air will disappear, and there will be generally more favorable relative humidity values in the mid levels that this storm will be entering and it will likely be able to spin up a lot more efficiently as it will also be slowing down by the time it reaches this area. It will not be maintaining a cost constant speed. It will kind of gradually slow down in here and then advance off to the northwest in response to a trough that will be entering the Gulf of Mexico. If you look at the GFS model here, this wrong shot, you can see if we go back to around 36 hours, you can see where the system's surface low is. And you can see it is embedded within a very favorable upper level environment. You have upper level outflow expanding out of all quadrants of this upper level anticyclone. The GFS is a little fast here and may not be exactly right here about the positioning of the system. It should generally be somewhere within this area. It's really hard to pinpoint exactly where the system will be, given that we do not have a lower level center at this point, and models tend to struggle without a well or with a well organized system. And tropical cyclogenesis is always a rough subject for models to really pin down, and so you can kind of take the intensity of the system with a grain of salt at this point. But as we see, you have this two dominating features here: you have a trough that has extended into the Gulf of Mexico, and you have this upper level anticyclone that is kind of a little protective bubble for the system. As the system is able to, as the system advances off to the Northwest, you can see this anticyclone is squished here and is rather elongated, kind of egg-shaped at this point. And the that is largely in response to the kind of battle between the two forces here. You have a what a westerly northwesterly wind out of the anticyclone and a kind of squished um easterly slash east northeasterly wind out of the trough and so you can see this these storm these two forces kind of battle in the upper levels here and so you can see the gfs has a weaker system in here you can see the low in the western caribbean here it doesn't really develop this much However, the GFS has been rather inconsistent with the system and has been inconsistent overall this year. And some other models do have this much uh, stronger at this point, and this is likely due to their response to the environment that it will be in. GFS, for some reason, does not spin this up rather quickly here. And that may be due to the lack of a mid level circulation in a mid-level um, kind of moisture pool that this has, but that seems to not be as much of a ca the case in some other forecast models, and so it is able to spin up a lot faster. There's a wide difference in intensity and track for this system, so it's pretty hard. There's a lot of uncertainty at this point with this system as it enters the Western Caribbean. But as this continues on, you can see this trough begins to weaken, and the storm is still somewhere in here. And you see the GFS does not have this very strong, 
some other models do, and but it remains in a rather favorable environment. It's not really getting sheared too much. There's not a lot of mid-level shear in here. This is still mostly outflow coming out of the system, and the mid-levels are still pretty favorable. The trough is backed off here. This is not very close to the system. This is not practically on top of the system. You don't have flow that's coming out into the system here. And so it's still able to, it still would be able to organize in here in this environment. One thing that may also be a problem for the system is if it does get too close to the trough here, you can tell that, nope, that's not what I meant to do. You can tell that it is getting stretched out by the mid-level winds here and some of this moisture gets dragged into the trough here and that prevents this from really organizing too much. However, if it's back here, this mid-level moisture is more circular and will be around the storm a little longer and will be able to allow the storm to strengthen more than what the GFS is currently depicting. I expect the GFS to probably catch on to this sooner rather than later. The GFS has struggled notoriously with systems this year. Um, Hannah and Isaias have also been storms that the GFS has generally not done particularly well with and has underestimated for several runs before finally catching up to the rest of the models and the general consensus. General consensus has this developing into a tropical storm at some point and kind of continuing somewhere off to the north. There's a pretty wide range of track at this point. It's either a weaker storm would head further to the west and a stronger storm would head further to the north. If you are on the northern Gulf Coast or the western Gulf Coast and maybe the northeastern Gulf Coast, please do kind of just have a plan in place just in case this does come to your area. Right now, intensity is pretty uncertain. It largely depends on how this trough, how it interacts with this trough, because once it is done interacting with this trough, it's in a generally favorable environment here, and there's not really a whole lot that's in the way. There's maybe some dry air. You can see the GFS practically flattens this out, but if it is a stronger system, you can imagine that this moisture plume would be a little more circular, and it will be able to fend off this dry air a little better, but there is dry air that is in here. Um, so it may not be able to become bonkers strong, but it could be something of note. All right, now on to Invest 98L here. We have a very large circulation today. We're going to wait for this satellite to load. Let's just go back to this. So you can see the system has organized a lot better today. You have a... Man, this loves to load on me. Um, we have a much better organized system today. And the trough is... no The overall axis of the system has rotated around and has become more centralized on the western part that took over last night. And now we have a broad but much better organized system today and much more central today. If we go to the closer shot of this, you can tell you have a very moist environment off to, it's a little displaced to the east here, but it is still within a pretty moist environment and sea surface temperatures are pretty high out ahead of it. And so it should be able to maintain and maybe increase this intensity some. It likely is probably pretty close to becoming a tropical depression here. If not, it will likely be designated as a potential tropical cyclone as tropical storm watches and warnings will likely be needed for the Leeward Islands as they are now in view of the system here. And so if you are in the Leeward Islands, do, be, do have a plan in place for the system as it does. It will likely be a significant weather event regardless of how strong this is at this point. All right, let's look at what we're kind of expecting for this storm over the next couple of days. So within the next 36 hours, it really shouldn't encounter too much of an impediment. It still has a pretty strong anti-cyclone that is allowing for it to 
maintain itself, and this will eventually be impacted by a very loose trough in here. This trough will be kind of a branch off of a an upper level low. You can see this better here. You have this upper level low here. You kind of have this general flow that is um, very trough-esque, but it is not very strong, and it will be very easy to break down as this comes up. As this moves along and the upper level anticyclone will eventually kind of just neutralize this trough, so to speak. And you can see this in action as this trough backs away here and you have a trough that is not very strong, but it is enough to shear the system. And how strong the shear affects this system is ultimately up to how strong the system is able to get in the short term. And if this does become stronger than expected, then it is likely that this GFS model run will likely not verify because the GFS has a 1008 or 1009 millibar storm here and it is getting ripped to pieces by shear. If you look at the GFS moisture field, you can see this in action. You have this very weak low, it's not even closed, that is getting sheared off to the southeast and it is getting pulverized essentially by the shear. However, if we have a stronger circulation as signaled by the H wharf, and keep in mind that the H wharf is not exactly um, sane here, just to say, but you see that the H wharf does indeed have the system a little stronger here, and it is able to become a better defined system in here and you have a mid-level circulation that is more stacked. You can see the mid-level flow is closer to the surface flow here and so it is able to survive the shear and if it does indeed survive the shear it should be able to strengthen quicker than if it does not survive the shear and ultimately what will determine whether or not it is able to survive the shear is how well organized the system is. And if you look at the H wharf at this point when it is north of Puerto Rico here, we're going to wait for the sounding to load, but the shear should be, okay, we're going to give up on this. Um, <laughs> the shear should be lessened by the time it reaches the Greater Antilles, which is why the H wharf perhaps does strengthen this so much to where it is now a hurricane north of Hispaniola. While I'm not saying this will verify, I'm saying that this is likely an allusion to what may happen here. Once this is able to separate itself from the shear and will be able to strengthen some, this will likely be able to strengthen again as it advances to the west here. And this may be a problem for the Greater Antilles slash the Bahamas slash the southeastern United States. And if you look at the GFS model run here, you can see that the shear does abate and the overall upper level environment actually favors outflow coming out of the system. And it will generally, these, these winds are very light in here. This is not a very sheared environment in the upper levels and it will be allowed to really expand the convection here. If it does indeed stay north of the islands, weaker a weaker storm would crash into the islands and likely remain weak, but we could have to watch this in the Gulf if it does remain weaker, because some ensembles are hinting at something entering the Gulf if it does remain weak. However, there's a lot to figure out here, but in the next five days, if you are within this region of the world. You need to have a plan in place just in case the system does indeed come to your area. The system will likely have some form of an impact here and will be generally tracking along this region, regardless of how strong it is. So it may be heavy rain, it may be you know, we may have a hurricane, we may have a tropical storm, we may have a tropical depression, we may just have nothing here. There is a lot to figure out, there's a lot of uncertainty. Models are very inconsistent run to run here on what exactly the storm ends up doing. 
But regardless, if you live in this region within the next five days, you're going to get something in here. And you need to be prepared for whatever it is that does happen. We'll have a lot more answers once we see how strong this is able to get within the next couple of days. And we'll see how much this is able to really strengthen and how much we will what what we will end up looking at tomorrow we'll have answers for both storms probably tomorrow sometime and maybe i'll be able to give you guys a little bit clearer of a forecast here but that's all thanks for watching